Evelyn to Philip, September 19th, 1944. My dearest, I started to type September 18th because I didn't write yesterday, and then I changed the date to the 19th, which is today. Sunday afternoon, as I walked out of the house to mail your letter, up drove Ethel, Al, and family. They came to call for the high chair, which Ethel needs for Stuart. Stuart is quite a big boy now, being almost six months old. He's a good-looking kid with big blue eyes. Adele almost started to cry when Al picked up the high chair and put it into the car. She cried out, Al, down, meaning put the chair down. Long after the car had pulled out of sight, she looked after it and kept saying, Al. I gave Adele dinner at my mother's house, and Ruth took over so I could eat supper here. On my way back from my mother's, I felt funny and soon discovered that I was unwell. No wonder I felt so badly all weekend. Goldie had a guest for the weekend, her girlfriend Shirley, the one you thought was so chesty in a snap with Harry and Goldie. She isn't half as nice as her picture led me to believe, but nevertheless, she is a nice kid, and she was my bed partner for two nights. One night, we both jabbered until 1.30 a.m. about everything under the sun. She is the gal who was writing to Harry W., but now she is contemplating marriage within a few weeks. Sunday night, we had a delicious dinner, and I got Adele to bed early. When I was finished, I was pretty tired and relaxed in the easy chair for a short while. Then I decided to knit for a little while. I've finished the back of the pink sweater and have page two started the fronts. The family sat outside and I soon joined them. Mr. and Mrs. Fromer and daughter and Mrs. Feldman were also there and we chatted about this and that. During the evening, the bench collapsed for the leg on the one side was completely rotted. My dad has promised to try to fix it for us. Later that night, Shirley and I gabbed away, and so the next morning I found it difficult to get up. Adele was insistent that I give her breakfast, so up I got. I'm using her table and one chair in the corner where the high chair stood, and it just fits. Adele loves the new arrangement. I put her food on the table, and she eats it herself. Sometimes I feed her according to my wishes. It's been rainy and cloudy all weekend, so both Adele and I have had to stay in the house. I knitted a while, a little while Adele played on the porch. She had lunch and we both took a nap. Forgot to mention that I had lunch too. I think I've put most of the lost weight back on. I've been making it a point to eat even if it means stuffing myself. I had a few letters yesterday, yours of the 9th September, Eddie's undated letter. He mentioned having pains in his head and back, and I wondered if he knew about this. A New Year's greeting from the Bennises. I shall send one off to them and their folks, and a card from the Florist Association through which you sent us the flowers. They wanted to know if we received the flowers on Mother's Day as they were taking a survey. Many of the gifts did not reach the recipients on the special day. Your letter was very cute, honey, and were you here, I'd simply eat you up. No kidding. Last night I had a good time. I went in town with Goldie and Shirley to see a movie. I wore my tailored suit and Dubonnet accessories, and my hair looked very nice, thank you. We took the 10th and Somerville bus and changed to the subway. We came out of the subway on the corner of Broad and Chestnut, and as we passed the Morris Building, I mentioned the fact that, page three, it was at this very spot that you and Lynn met me that morning we took out our marriage license. Every familiar sight as we walked along Chestnut Street to 19th Boyd set me to remembering, and I couldn't help mentioning several things. I felt a great longing for you all evening long. The picture Janie, for my money, was excellent. It was a light comedy and just the sort of picture I was in the mood for. 
It made me laugh quite a bit. I think you'd enjoy it immensely in case you haven't seen it. After the show, we walked to 15th and Market and stopped into a drugstore where we had sundaes. It was an extra special large chocolate nut sundae, and I was having trouble finishing it. I remarked, quote, if Phil were here, he'd simply divide it in half and eat both his and half of mine, end quote. However, I determined to eat it and did. We took the subway and walked home from Broad Street along Ruscombe Street, which recalled memories of our last visit to that drugstore on York Road and Ruscombe Streets before we went to the Broad Theater, and the many nights I had come a run-in to meet you when you were coming home from Fort Dix. Shortly before we left the house, who should call but Myra? She called to wish us all a Happy New Year, and undoubtedly to clear her conscience. I didn't get the chance to talk to her, but I called her this morning, as I wanted to tell her about my grandmother's death. Someday I'll tell you quite a bit about what had and has happened between Lil, Myra, and myself, and you'll have a clearer picture. I'd rather save it for someday, if and you don't mind. I promise to see Myra in the near future and fully intend to. Today, yours very lovingly of September 11th arrived. I'm not mad because you neglected to write on the 10th because you took 40,000 winks instead of 40. Four. You asked in this one whether Adele pronounces the R in deer. Well, not exactly. Sometimes she does and sometimes she doesn't. I forgot to tell you about this. Ruth took her to her girlfriend's house one afternoon and there was a soldier present. She ran to him calling him daddy. When she got a good look at him, she said, uh uh, meaning no. Honestly, sweet, I'm sure she'll know you. Emma joined Phil in Georgia for the holidays. Etta came over for a short visit yesterday. She is very, very big and is due the end of October, beginning of November. Miss Han called me several times wanting to know if I could come to work for her, but I declined. I mean to get more rest no matter what. I shall try to do some work for her from time to time because she's having lots of difficulty getting a steady girl. Dot called and had the blues. She called Snuff long distance and almost wanted to join him if he could get a place. She still might. Since I didn't see her this weekend, I am definitely going to see her this coming weekend. Our new next door neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Oak Rock, I'm not sure of the spelling, gave Adele a jumping rope. Their very nice neighbors are in, and are in the fruit business. We walked from one house to the other through the porch as we did with the Feldmans. The memory that recurred to me most during the entire night was the fact that three years hence, you came home to me with no strings attached, or were there. Phil, I'm anxiously awaiting a repetition of that very same day, and I hope it isn't too far off. I'm getting impatient for a change. It's really only my mood tonight, for I'm very anxious to see you at this very moment. Page 5. Mom received a New Year's greeting from Harold Adams, which was in the nature of a surprise to her. Adele has reached the hitting stage and lifts her hands freely, though I caution her frequently. I wish very hard that you were here now, for there are times when I feel my strength to keep up with her will give out. She's fresh, too, sticks her nose up in the air and says a very definite no. Ethel thinks her only fault in her features is her nose. Too broad is Ethel's conclusion, but cute at that. Ray is here for dinner this evening and, as is usual, sends her best regards. Sarah painted Adele's fingernails with red polish this afternoon, and Adele still can't get over it. She's a real woman, all right. Yeah, ma'am. Adele and I filled the penny bank to the top with pennies, nickels, and quarters, and this afternoon Adele helped me get them out. I'm going to change them in for defense stamps and start another bond. I literally rushed through this letter, honey, so you'll have to forgive any technical errors. 
I wanted to write a long letter as I've been writing emails all week, so I hope I'm forgiven. You asked me to write of particular memories in connection with sex in a recent letter. I don't think I shall ever forget the first night you wanted to show me, quote, how, unquote. I was dead sick with fright, but I wanted to because I knew how much I loved you. I was never sorry. On the contrary, I'll use one of Adele's phrases. Oh, boy. Page six. And do you recall one night when I wore nothing but my coat? And do you recall how we spent Sunday mornings when you came in on pass from Fort Meade? Not once, not twice, but three and more times. And once when we had the radio to accompany us. Oh, Phil, darling, the best days of our lives are slipping by unnoticed. Of course there will be others, but this part of our youth is most important. I regret that more than anything, though more so for you. I love you, darling husband, and exist only for the day that you will return to me and be home. Or, quote, home, unquote, once more. Don't tell me which home you would prefer. I'm sure I know. And before I just fly straight to you for want of you, I sign off as usual, your Ev. Ruth Paller, Evelyn's sister to Philip, September 19, 1944. Dear Phil, sorry I didn't write sooner, but I hope you'll understand. I came home from the shore September 9th, and I bought Adele a lot of things. I bought her a pair of Dubonnet corduroy joppers and a powder blue long-sleeved polo shirt to go with them. Also, a white blouse with a square neck with eyelet lace around it. There are four tiny buttons in the front, but it really buttons down the back. I also bought her a reversible doll. You see a little white doll's face and a real long flowered skirt. And when you pick the skirt up, you see a little colored doll with a different flowered skirt on. The idea is real cute, and I think it is one of... Page 2, the most original I ever saw. I went back to school last week, and I now have five majors, and physical education and hygiene are my only minors. I have biology, bookkeeping, modern history, English, and practical math. The teachers I have seem very nice, and I hope I can say the same about them at the end of the term. While I was down the shore, my brother Cy came down for a few days. We took some studio pictures and snapshots together, and they came out very nice. A week after Cy went back to Philly, Shorty came down for a few days, too. In all, I had a swell time down there, and I hope I can go again next year. But with the family, of course, I was... Age 3, glad to hear you were able to see Eddie, and I only wish you could get to see him more often. But as you said in one of your letters, you have no choice in the matter. I had that picture that Eddie sent home made into an 8x10. I intend to have it colored soon if it's possible. I'll send you a picture of Cy and me as soon as I have more made. At the present moment, Cy has all of the pictures, so I'm going to order more for myself. Cy, by the way, called us up Saturday, September 16th, and he may be home in two weeks on a 48-hour pass. He's on the battleship New York, somewhere in the States, and he expects to remain on this side until December. Page 4. Ev probably wrote you about everything else, so I guess there's nothing more to write. I'll close now with love and regards from all. Love and kisses, Ruth. P.S. I bought you a box of salt water taffies, but Ev's enclosing them in one of her packages to you. Let me know when you receive them. Dot Cohen, a friend, to Phil, September 19, 1944. Dear Phil, I don't remember who owes who what, but here I am again. 
Since snuff went away, I'm way behind in my correspondence. I know you'll understand. I spoke to Evie today, and she promised to meet me in town some night. For my 21st birthday, all the girls are going to a show and a nightclub. We're just big shots. I registered to vote yesterday. It will be my first time. Phil, what are the fellows' views on who should be president? I know I'm casting mine for Roosevelt. After all, he has been in since... Page two, I'm nine years old. I saw some very good pictures lately. Janie, Wilson, Mr. Sheffington, and She Loved a Soldier. They were all entertaining. I put a call through for Snuff last night, and it was really good to hear his voice. If I continue feeling like I do, I'll probably join him. Of course, I hope to be able to hold out until he reaches until he finishes his basic, which will be around the first of the year. I have been playing quite a bit of gin rummy lately, and I really enjoyed the game. My page three luck hasn't been too good, but I'm hoping for a change. I'm enclosing some pictures of the baby, and I hope you like them. Of course, I'm prejudiced. But he really is a doll. He still has platinum blonde hair and blue eyes. He has features like a girl. He is really quite smart and picks up things rapidly. There really isn't much more news now, so I'll close. And please write soon. As ever, dot.